possible if an object is bouncing on a horizontal surface that you could be asked to work out the total distance traveled in so many bounces or, or completely in which case you can look at the heights that things have fallen and risen and these will create a GP and you might need to use the sum to infinity to find the total distance that's been traveled. To find the rebound speed we first of all need to work out the speed of impact and we can do that by applying SUVATS and using the fact that the acceleration will be positive g. Once the object hits the ground then we can use Newton's experimental law and get that v equals eu and this will enable us to work out the rebound speed. We first of all need to find out how the height after the first bounce. We can do that, it's reached its greatest height, so V is naught and the acceleration will be negative G and therefore we can work out the height after the first bounce. We know how far it fell initially and we know the height of the first bounce and as long as we realise that this will start to create a geometric series, we can work out the value of R and then using that value of R, we can work out the height after the third bounce. To find the total distance travelled, we need to find the total distance that's been fallen and the total distance that's been risen. Both of these will be a geometric series, so we can use the sum to infinity on both of them, add the two answers together to get the total distance travelled. We can apply conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law to get expressions for the speeds of A and the speed of B immediately after the collision. Just be careful when we're doing conservation of linear momentum that we define one particular direction as being positive. So in these solutions, we've taken the initial direction of A as being the positive direction. We can find the velocity that B comes away from the wall at by using Newton's experimental law. For B to have a further collision with A, then the speed of B has to be greater than the speed of A, and that will lead us to one inequality involving E. To obtain the second part of the inequality involving E, we need to take into account that A reversed its direction after the first impact. Here we just use Newton's experimental law and conservation of the new momentum and solve the two simultaneously to find the necessary speeds of A and B. We know the direction of motion of A is unchanged and therefore its speed has to be positive and this enables us to find an inequality involving E.
This last part is quite complicated. We need to consider the collision between B and C and use conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law to enable us to work out the velocity of B after that collision between B and C. Once we've worked out the speed of B, we need to then compare that to the speed of A to see if there'll be a further collision between A and B.